In 1920, a former student who was a soldier in World War I wrote of the college's influence during his battlefield experiences. While I was away and after my return, I often had cause to be grateful for what the dear LDS College had done for me. Often over there, I felt discouraged. Once things looked so dark that for a moment I thought I would be justified in deserting. Many a time, shells were falling all around with a crash that made life look very uncertain. Once, for nearly a week, we tramped through mud with rain drenching us almost hourly. I had gone through about all that any young fellow could be tested with. It often made me wonder whether existence was worthwhile. But when I was nearest despair, somehow hope and joy always came to my rescue. That hope and joy, I realized, came largely as a result of the ideals held up constantly before me while I was studying in that great school. As I now see it, whether in theology, in devotional, in the shop, the laboratory, or in the classroom, everywhere the same spirit was found. It was the spirit of faith, of trusting confidently in the eternal justice and goodness of God. That spirit was my strength amidst scenes of awful destruction and bloodshed. As I go about my daily work, it is now the lifeline to which I cling when temptation is near. I esteem what knowledge I obtained, but I esteem far more highly the feeling implanted in me that I am here for a purpose and that my Father is near to see me through if I do my part as I should. Life is definitely a battlefield, um, uh, especially today. Uh, there's a lot of chaos and, and tumult. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of immorality. Um, it's, it's definitely tough living in, in the world we live in today. And you see a lot of people fall and, and falter. And I've experienced a lot of pain in my life and, and a, lot of, a lot of sadness. And, uh, but I, I think because of this college, I've, I've learned to trust in my Heavenly Father. And, and the letter, he expressed his belief that if we trust in our, our Heavenly Father, then, then things will turn out all right. And, and I truly believe that. I don't want to blame my circumstances, but high school is very difficult. Um, it was a typical high school, um, I guess you could say. There was gangs, there was, there was violence. Um, it was scary, it was a scary place. Um, so I, I made the decision, you know, to, to leave high school. It wasn't a place where I felt I could grow spiritually, academically, or, or be with my Heavenly Father wanted me to be. With my free time, because I wasn't in school, I was able to, able to uh, serve a mini mission. And uh, there was a missionary there, and uh, he had this crazy idea that I should go live with his family and go to school. And I honestly thought it was insane. I was uh, living with his family and a very close friend, a close family friend, and he said I should come down to uh, LDS Business College and, and see how I like the campus. And, and I came down here and I just love the spirit of the campus and, and how Christ was imprinted, you know, just all over the campus and the students and the, and the teachers. Uh, it, it, his image was everywhere. So when I walked into the college for the first time, it was, it was like coming home. And it, where I'm from, college wasn't, it wasn't really an option for me. And uh, I was willing to, to settle for mediocrity. I was willing to, uh, to not reach my full potential. And uh, coming here to Elias Business College really changed that for me. It changed my perspective, uh, not only on myself, but you know, on the gospel and, and what it could really do for me. Um, because of this college, I have opportunities that I never would have had before. And uh, I, I can reach my full potential. Um, I, I do feel as if the sky's the limit for me. From 1886 to 1899, the college grew. It had begun its career with funding from individuals willing to support it. But that private funding couldn't be depended on forever and the college couldn't grow or enlarge its sphere of usefulness. 
As the years passed, it needed more support. Leaders labored with incredible energy to find ways to maintain the college, but eventually their resources were exhausted and the future of the college seemed dim. Commencement exercises in 1899 were gloomy. Those gathered at the assembly hall greeted one another in silence and sorrow. The day itself was cloudy and foreboding. The college's founding principal, Dr. Carl G. Mazur, was the lone champion of the college's future. Standing at the pulpit, he cried in his earnest broken English, The school is not dead, nor is she going to die. On the contrary, her future will be more glorious than her past. His words were a stunning prediction, spoken at a time when no one could imagine the college's preservation. Yet, one man's ambition gave it remarkable fulfillment. Few felt more keenly the precarious situation of the college than President Joseph E. Taylor, a counselor in the Salt Lake State Presidency. A long connection with the school had won his affection. Even more significant were the numerous letters he had received from his son, Samuel, an alumnus of the college. Samuel, who was then on a mission, begged his father to save the college. Between the close of the college in late May and the middle of June, President Taylor threw himself into saving the dying institution. In public and private settings, he declared that the Lord would be displeased if the saints let the college die. His efforts resulted in the collection of enough money to pay off the college's debts. And to continue its existence, he also secured the promise of church president Lorenzo Snow for enough money to operate the college for the coming year. The thousands of students who've attended LDS Business College since 1899 owe their spiritual and educational experience in part to President Joseph E. Taylor's tireless efforts and righteous ambition.